imagine it's 1400 years ago. It's the 9th of Muharram. At night, you're in your tent and you hear noises and commotion coming from outside. Naturally, you leave your tent to see what's going on and you discover hundreds and thousands of people leaving the camp of Abba Abdullah. Looking around, bewildered, your eyes fall onto the face of Abel Fadl al-Abbas salam, and you see him looking at his brother with sorrow and sadness. There and then, you decide you're going to stay. The morning of Ashura comes. You've now become the 73rd companion of Imam al Hussein. Now, knowing what you know of that day, of the events that are going to unfold, imagine you walk up to the Imam and you offer your service to him, and he leaves the choice up to you. So, for example, you could go to bring back water with Al Fadl Abbas, you could pretend, protect the tents of the women and children. You could help bring back the bodies or at least the pieces of the bodies of the companions. What would you want to do on that day? I think each, uh, so each scenario has its own. I and mean, if you were to ask somebody, would you stand where Zuhair stood? Would you go to the river? To be honest, we all talk about wanting to be martyred on the day. So that is very difficult to answer. But I think something that stands out <clears throat> is that there was no, and this is all, all the, it's all in, in Allah's hands, but there was no male present post Karbala besides our fourth Imam alayhi salam. But he was in a, in a state which was, he was not in the best of health. Um, although he kind of, he recovered after, after Ashura. Uh, so it's, I don't know whether you'd want to stand there and take take it on your take the arrows on your chest. I mean, it's it's a very difficult question to answer. Whether you'd want to go to the to the to the river, whether you'd want to stand in front of the six month old so he doesn't get you know it's. Uh, I don't think I can answer that question. As long as our our names are out, if our name was written as part of the. If there were 73 and I was part of the 73, then I wouldn't want anything else. <clears throat> now imagine one day you come home from work, you open your house door, you walk in, you see your family are running around the house frantically. One person's gathering fruit, another person's bringing sweets, another person's making tea. And it occurs to you that you might have a guest or guests at your house. During that commotion, you grab a family member and you ask them who's come round our house, who's come to see us. And they reply, they haven't come to see us, they've come to see you. So naturally you ask, who is it? and they say they're waiting for you in the living room. So you come up to the living room, open the door, walk in, and you see sitting there is Imam Hussain In that moment, what would you want to say to him? What would you want to hear from him? I think first of all, I, I wouldn't even feel ready to, to present myself in, this, in, in the state that I am as a human being uh, in, front of, in front of these pure and holy personalities. But you know, the, if, if that scenario was to occur, I don't know whether I'd want to give him condolences, but for whom I, I don't know who I'd give condolences for. Uh, Starting from 
from his mother all the way through to his, his children and, and beyond. Um, and it's easy for us to say, but I would say to him that had I been there that day, I would have taken it. You know, I would have stood there protecting you whilst you prayed. But, yeah, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> what would you want to hear from him? What would you make, I'd, make you I'd the I'd want him to say that you are one of me. And that's, that would be enough for me. If he said to me that I accept you, as, as one of my Shia, then that's it for me. I wouldn't want anything else. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't ask him for anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anything from me. I just want him to say that I, I accept you and you are my follower and that's enough. So at the beginning I asked you about 1400 years ago. We said that you would walk up to the Imam and the Imam would give you a choice in how you wanted to serve him. A lot of us often forget that our 12th Imam is amongst us today and in a way him being at least physically absent from us is a way of him giving us a choice in how we decide to serve him and uphold his message. So I guess my final question is um, what have you done for the 12th Imam? What do you think he deserves from you? Given that on that day, Imam Sain had 72 loyal people who gave everything for him. Whereas this Imam... Yeah, I, I think... I genuinely believe if anyone says that they've done something for the Imam, then the Imam would have reappeared by now. I don't think anyone's done anything for him. We've done it all for ourselves without trying to sound controversial. You know, um, we, we say al ajal al ajal but, you know, as human beings, we need to ask ourselves, really, is that, do we really mean that? Because your first question is about Imam Hussein. Um, and so that's Imam Hussein who has passed. But would Imam Mahdi say to us that I've accepted you, you are my followers? You know, what, you know, we all try, we all have our small contributions, whether you recite, whether you give majalis, whether you you work in a channel that's producing documentaries that's kind of spreading the message. Whether you serve food at the mosque or whatever you do, everyone has their individual parts. But really, I believe as a, as, a, as a community, as a nation, I don't think we've really done much for him without trying to sound controversial. We are so bogged down in our own politics and our own divisions, we can't even be united as, as an as a ummah because of small different divisions of whatever reason there might be. I think it's time that everybody puts all their differences aside and, and work towards a common goal because we're calling him every day. He's not coming and we need him. Um, so in terms of what we've, personally, I, you know, I can say I've done this, this and this, but I don't believe I've done it. I, I don't, gen, I, I, I try, but I'd, you're, you're worried. You're worried how far did your amal go? What, what if your intention wasn't clean? What if, what if you did it for your own, Kind of reasons what if you did it for yourself and not genuinely for everyone tries and i'm not saying no one try everybody tries and everyone wants to do something for the imam um but i still think we no one does enough and uh we you know we pray that because there there are people that i i see and you they really strive and struggle to you know especially the kind of the we're talking about the the real people of knowledge that, that are amongst us, not necessarily here or wherever they are, you see people making an effort. But at the same time, there's, um, as a community, we, yes, Muharram, Safa, Ramadan, and then what about the rest of the months? Where are we for the rest of the months? Even if we talk about Azar, I know we have two months of it, but then does Imam Hussein just vanish for the rest of the year? Do we forget him? Because that's the trend, and now it's, you know, I don't want to say it, but it's, it's become like a fashion. Like in Muharram Safa, you are like this, and for the rest of the month, even Ramadan is the same. As soon as Eid comes, we, we turn back to our normal selves. Do we give, and this includes myself, do we give uh, Salah the same importance outside of Ramadan that we do during it? And everything has to be in balance, and sometimes I think we lose that balance. So I've, I've still not answered your question because I, my answer is I don't think we've done enough 
or I don't think I've done enough. But inshallah, that's the, that's the aim. And this is the difference between us and them and him, is that we make mistakes. But I think the biggest mistake is not to learn from the old ones. So if, if you don't do something right, you should try it the next time and the next time and the next time. And hopefully, wherever we end up is, is not too far from where we should end up, hopefully. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hanging up and giggy at so long. Hello, Kara. خدا خدا کند که بیای خدا کند سنور قیل نوایی خدا کند